Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today I have with me a selection of QNAP NAS drives and I'm going to explain to you all you need to know about NAS, which one to get, why you need one, all that kind of stuff. This is an off the script kind of video. I'm just going to be uploading my data from my brain from years of experience to you so you can just quick start into the world of why you need this stuff. Now I'm going to talk about why you need a NAS, okay? So NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. Network Attached Storage, what that means is these NAS drives, they actually have a CPU inside and that CPU can allow it to do operations which is different to a hard drive. Normally a hard drive, you have to plug it into your Mac, plug it into your PC and then the PC dictates what should happen on the hard drive. So you might have heard of something like external hard drive, you might have heard of something called DAS, direct access storage and external hard drives and DASs, they're great because you can plug it into the PC, but where they fall apart is, I guess, performance and speed, the number of drives you can back up to and the whole smartness to it. So in the past, what I've done is I used to store all my data on an external drive and it's great, you start off with one external drive, then you fill it up, then you have another external drive and if you want to reference any footage you've recorded in the past, it pretty much takes forever to find out which drive is which. If you want to use two footages from two different drives, you need to unplug it, you need to move dates around and you kind of get lost. Now with a NAS and DASH drive, you get these bays and inside these bays, you can store hard drives. So as you need more data, you can just get another drive and expand the array and what you get is a volume. A volume is a storage space and that storage space can grow in size the more hard drives you plug in. And this is automatically handled by the CPU, the smartness that's inside. Secondly, there's something called RAID and the basics you need to know that is it gives you a little bit of protection. There's loads of different RAID types. The one I use is RAID 6. It's slightly slower than RAID 5. I've got a video all about RAID and all that stuff in another video, so check that out in the description below. But it's slightly slower than RAID 5, but what it gives you is extra protection. So two of your hard drives can fail and you'll still be able to access all of the data on your computer. And that gives you enough time to send it to the manufacturer, get a replacement drive, buy another drive, put it back in, and once it's in, it's going to rebuild the array. And one of the other issues is I use 14 terabyte drives. What that means is when you're rebuilding the array, when a drive goes bad, that's a lot of data it needs to churn through. And that churning is going to be depending on how powerful of a CPU you've got inside your NAS unit. And one of the problems of having such a large array is that the likelihood of you losing a second drive when it's trying to rebuild the array is a lot higher because it hammers the drives to get all the data at a time. There's a lot of IOPS and you don't want to risk that because if you lose a second drive while it's rebuilding the array, in RAID 5, that's it, you've lost your volume and you're gonna have to figure out how to recover that data. Now traditionally, a DAS would be the option to get because it has a direct access to your computer, a direct attachment to your computer, so potentially they can be as fast as possible. However, in my experience with DASs, they actually operate a lot slower than uh, what you imagine them to be. I mean, USB 3, that should go up to five gigabits a second. I never get those speeds on a DAS. However, some of these NAS units, they support 10 gigabit ethernet, which gives you the speeds of uh, USB 3.1, that's 10 GBS. And some of them also give you Thunderbolt ports. Now Thunderbolt ports, they also operate at 10 gigabits a second. And I'll just talk about the speeds right now. So right now I have a five bay array of a RAID 6, and that gets me around up to 500 megabytes a second. Now 500 megabytes a second isn't one gigabit, it isn't faster than fast, but if I fill up some of the other drives or if I use M.2 caching, all that kind of stuff, I can get faster speeds. So the great thing I found with these NAS units is it gives you the smartness of having a server to automatically back up all of your data to the cloud, and do some extra operations like having a time machine share for all of your Mac computers to back up to and you can do some really smart stuff inside there. You get that smartness as well as you get the performance, or even better performance, than a normal DAS. You can get Thunderbolt, you can get Ethernet, 10 gigabits, and it gets nice and fast. Now speaking of speeds and which one to get in the world of NAS, right now I'm rocking this 8-bay NAS, and it goes, for me, I filled up five drives on a RAID 6, it goes around 400 to 500 megabytes a second right, and reads that can go up to one gigabit a second, because I've got an SSD cache inside and I use my SSD cache as read-only, I'll explain that in a bit. But pretty much that's the speeds I'm rocking from with this guy. So in real-world terms, I personally don't need 
Thunderbolt, and I personally don't need 10 gigabits a second because the fastest write I can get again is around five gigabits a second. So this is gonna break down into the pros and cons on different ranges. So for starters, this is a 453BE. It's only got one gigabit a second ports, which means the fastest you can get speed wise is 100 megabytes a second. 100 megabytes a second is good, more than good enough for video from an iPhone, more than good enough for a video from Samsung. When it comes to professional cameras, 100 megabytes a second can handle Sony cameras, but ideally you want a bit faster than that. So what you can do with one of these little guys is that you can upgrade it yourself. It took me about five minutes, unscrew, plug it in and it works and this gives you 10 gigabit ethernet. This range in itself, the 453, there's several editions of them. The starting price in Australia at the moment is around $600 and compared to other NAS drives you get for that price, this is the best one because you get that PCIe upgrade slot. The other ones, they only max out at one gigabit second speed. They have the same processors, the same number of bays, all that kind of stuff. However, this one is more upgradable because of that PCIe and of course, you can always get the more expensive editions and it doubles in price if you want the best of the best one. The best of the best one has Thunderbolt 3 and M.2 SSD support. However, it's only four bays. So you're spending 1,300 for the top of the line version of this, but you're gonna be limited by the Celeron processor. Now I've tried running this guy as a RAID 0. RAID 0 is the fastest form of RAID. It just bunches all of your hard drives together as one volume. The negative, of course, is that if any of the drives fail, you've lost your data, or you need to go through the whole recovery process to find out what kind of data you recover, but pretty much, you're gonna be having some downtime if you lose one drive. With RAID 6 on a four bay encrypted, and that's right, I encrypt all of my data, I'll go into that in a second. With that all encrypted, I get around 250 megabytes a second read and write, which is the same as I get on one of these beefier, more powerful CPUs. 250 megabytes a second read and write because I'm only using four bays and I use RAID 6, which gives me two drive protection. So I get a lot slower speeds than 10 GBE allows me for. However, with SSD caching, you can get a lot faster speeds. So you can go ahead and use more of the throughput. But I'm gonna to talk to you about processors. This guy here has a i3 four core quad core processor. This guy has a Pentium Gold dual core processor. This guy has a, a quad core, but it's a Celeron CPU. So the difference between a Celeron CPU and a Pentium Gold is like 2x speed. The difference between a Pentium Gold and an i3 is around 1.5 again to 2x speed. So this is the beefiest, most powerful processor. And I find that these two processors with a RAID 0 configuration with four drives, they can hit the 10 gigabit a second speeds. So they can hit the maximum speeds when I run it as a RAID 0. They also perform faster scrubbing operations. What happens is, once a month, ideally, when you have a RAID, you want these systems to go through all of the files, make sure everything is correct, make sure you're not losing any data, there's no corruption, all that stuff. So that's a scrubbing operation. It goes through all the drives and makes sure everything is good. It's very processor intensive. And I find that these drives do that operation around 50 megabytes a second faster than the Celeron processor. So you are getting a lot more from a better CPU. And that's not to say that this is a bad unit because again, when I'm handling a RAID 6, it gives me 250 megabytes a second, it runs completely fine. If I want 1000 megabytes a second, this is not gonna get it. And when I go through scrubbing, this is gonna take longer. But at least I'd say it's a lot better than a DAS. With a DAS, if you want to do a scrubbing operation, you need to have your Mac plugged in to the DAS drive permanently and that would have to do the scrubbing and you have to do it over the wire. So it's, if you wanna check the hard drive, your Mac's gonna to have to be the controller for all of that. And if you're trying to use your Mac while it's doing all that stuff, you're gonna have a lot slower situation than if you just let the CPUs in these NAS drives operate on the drives itself. So I gotta say, having a NAS drive is a million times, it's, it's, why would you get a DAS? If you can get the performance of a DAS, if not greater on a NAS, why would you get a DAS? The price is, I've seen DAS drives very expensive. Like Lacey, they did do their DAS drives, very expensive. And I'm gonna to talk to you about noise levels, okay? Because if you ever use hard disk drives, they are very noisy. You don't want them close to your computer. So, this drive gives you Thunderbolt 3, okay? Thunderbolt 3 is great. However, the speed that Thunderbolt 3 operates is 10 gigabits a second. Whereas if you just use the 10 gigabit a second cable, the ethernet cable, you can get 10 gigabits a second 
and it can go up to 100 meters in length. You can literally store this guy in a closet, run a wire to your computer, and it'll be quiet as a cucumber. Whereas if you're using a DAS or Thunderbolt 3, the maximum range you can get there is two meters. So you're gonna have a noisy That's how they sound like when they're in operation. You're gonna have a noisy system next to you. So again, you can't beat noise when it comes to NAS and you can even directly plug it into your Mac. I use an Ethernet to Thunderbolt 3 adapter and it allows me to just plug this unit straight into my computer and I'm happy as Larry. Okay, I kind of like talked to you about the advantages of a NAS over a DAS, so one, you can get better noise, one, you can do all the scrubbing and all the intensive hard drive scanning operations. If you want to do a complete scan of a 14 terabyte drive, that takes hours. So you're gonna have to have your computer managing all that with a DAS for hours, or just play it unsafe and hope that your hard drives will last. It's on you, it's your data. You gotta think, how would you feel? What would you lose if you lost your data? You need to decide that for yourself, okay? I'm gonna talk about these different ranges. Kind of touched on it a bit, but I'm gonna go in a bit more depth. So this is the cheapest one, and this is over $1,000 cheaper than this unit. Where they are the same is that they both have four bays. Four bays. So if you have more than four drives, you can't use these units. You can get expansion units, which is a second, it's kind of like a DAS for a NAS, and you plug it in over USB or even Ethernet, and they can expand the RAID. You do get a better CPU in this one, so again, scrubbing will be a lot faster, you can do virtual machines, and I'm gonna go into something called ZFS, and that's for video editors. But out of the box, these two units, they're very comparable. The problem is this one only gives you one gigabit a second ethernet, but like I said, you can install a 10 gigabit a second adapter, and this one also includes SSDs, so you can have SSD caching in your NAS drive at budget price with this unit. So this is the go-to NAS if you're starting your journey in the world of storing your data and protecting it. However, this guy, again, it has a better CPU, it can have better performance, and there's actually something special coming up. I went to an event called QNAP Tech Day, it's an event series all over the world for free, just applied and it let me through, and there's something called ZFS. ZFS is a new file system which is being released for these NAS drives and it's a bit more processor and memory intensive. They recommend, well they had a demo using this model itself but with 8 gigabytes RAM so they upgraded the RAM and it had ZFS running here. Where ZFS is cool is that it compresses all of the data inline automatically on the hard drives and in memory. Also you can store more files in your memory and your SSD cache, which means you have a lot more files in the fast storage area, which means that when you're trying to access all of your data, it's gonna be a lot faster with ZFS. I personally haven't tested it myself. Traditionally, it's been in the enterprise level of NAS, but when it comes out next year, I think Q1 next year is when it's slated for release, you're gonna need at least this model to support that pathway. With this one also, you get out of the box, the best of the bang features, you, you get 10 gigabit ethernet, you get two M.2 slots for NVMe caching, you get Thunderbolt 3, like I said. Where I say this guy is better though, it's smaller, lighter, it's got an external power supply unit, so that means it potentially can run cooler, but I guess this one probably is easier to manage because you just have one tool that you carry around with you, so maybe this one's better on the go. So that is the difference between the BE range, the 453 BE range, and the 472 XT. Now this 472 XT comes in three different models. One's a six bay, one's an eight bay. Now what is this guy here? This is an 872N. Now 872N is kind of like a budget version of this guy. And I gotta say budget because prices vary worldwide. I've seen this model, the 872N, for a thousand Australian dollars cheaper than the 872 XT. But it really depends on the prices in your locality and the sales that are on offer, because in some regions, I've heard in America, the price difference is only 200 to 300 dollars. So for that price difference, I'd probably just go straight to the XT model. But if you do get a good deal on the 872N, I'd jump on that, because while you do miss out on Thunderbolt 3, and you do miss out on 10 GBE, you do miss out on that, you only get 5 GBE with this one. Again, you can easily upgrade this guy with one of these cards, an extra $100, and you've got a 10 GBE system. And, okay, you lose out on Thunderbolt 3, you can get an adapter for that, but I personally don't use Thunderbolt 3 because 
The biggest problem I have with TV3 is that it only goes up to two meters in length. So you're gonna have to have this NAS unit close to your computer. You don't want that. So you want 10 GBE. Furthermore, if you want the best of the best, there's PCIe cards. They go up to 40 gigabits a second. So 40 GB, 40 GBE, you got to use a special adapter. And you know, to be honest, they're very expensive. But in the world of tomorrow, you're probably gonna get an upgrade card to go up to 40 GBE very soon, in the next couple of years, I guess. And you plug that straight into your Mac and you get the fastest of the fastest performance. So where I do recommend this 872N is if you can get it for, I guess, $500 or more off compared to an XT range. Now, there are way more models of these NAS units available. I've seen some AMD processor models. The one thing I'd say watch out for is that AMD models, they tend to lack graphics cards. So the good thing with these Intel models is they all have built-in integrated graphics cards. These guys have better graphics cards than this one, but in general, you can get GPU accelerated rendering of your video files. So for example, if you use Plex, you can decode the footage faster than you would if you had an AMD model. But that's not to say that AMD models are bad, it's just that they tend to miss out on an integrated GPU. And you can, of course, there's a PCI slot there, you can plug in a compatible GPU and you can be light years ahead of these guys. And if you want the best of the best, there's actually, I forget what it's called, it's like a TS something, 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 and it's made for the Mac Pro. It actually looks like a Mac Pro. It's got an Intel 28 core Xeon inside that. So if you're one of those Mac Pro, super awesome, rich people, you can get a matching NAS that looks exactly like a Mac Pro, Xeon inside, all that kind of goodness. So check it out, have a bit of fun, get the best deals. I'd say if you're starting out, don't get a NAS, don't go through the whole external hard drive route. I'd say maybe get one SSD external hard drive for when you're out and about and shaking it. But in general, get this guy over a NAS. And if you want that ZFS future, look at the 472 XT or look at the 872N or even the A72XT, that's for the, the big, big guys. Also, if you're not in a rush, I've spoken to QNAP and they've said they're releasing a new series of NAS with Ryzen processors inside, specifically built for ZFS, and ZFS, again, is gonna be better for video editing performance, so you might as well wait for that. A couple of months should be out. So guys, let me know what you guys think about the world of NAS. Hopefully I've explained a little bit about why NASs are cooler than DASs and external drives and just getting in a mess. You can just have everything backed up on one of these beautiful devices. You can even get a second little one and run that as RAID 0 and back up the main guy onto this and that way your data is treasured and safer than most people. And I hope you guys found this useful and let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Hope you enjoyed the show.